everyone, NGM here, and today we are going to be beginning our kind of let's play a series of one of my personal favorite board games of all time, Axis and Allies. Now, before I really start talking about everything here and over there, if you guys have not seen my 4th of July video where, well, basically I explained what direction my YouTube channel is currently going. You know, I'm currently in this uh, war stage where I basically just got back into this game. I played years ago, but now I have this and all this. So if you haven't seen that video, highly recommend it. Card will appear right up here. Go click on that for the changes that I have announced for this channel. Now, before we talk about anything here, I kind of want to explain a couple things before we start this actual game right here. I've actually played this game for a while, like for a number of years. Now there was a huge time gap in between before I played it old and what this is now. And I kinda wanna show you guys what kind of games I have. Pardon this uh, lamp. I kinda had issues with lighting, so this is all I got. So basically I have 1940 Pacific, and Europe. These are practically brand new. I bought them almost a uh, half a month ago. And then I also have World War I 1914. These are by far my favorite versions of the game. Not only because World War I is basically what sparked World War II, but because these two, just look at the sheer size of this map. I love this map. Now I do have 1942 but that's upstairs in the game board closet where everything else is and because ever since I got this game I really had no use for it because just look at the size of this damn board it practically almost fills up my entire pool the entire pool table and now I'm transferring onto this I want to talk about the board itself just how big it is and this was a huge problem for me and my friends back when we would play this like on weekends during schools during the school year we kind of had issues up in the uh britain and france area you know like uh this oh man my shadow right in uh this area this like canal in between the two countries and navy kind of because the uh, british navy would clog up that area and sometimes would go into lands and that just annoyed the living hell out of us so when I finally got this board game um, everyone's kind of away and my friends is up at a summer camp anyway now most people who purchase this game this is a World War II uh, game strategy board game and this is that's what the board here is made for you have Nazi Germany, France, Soviet Union, China, Japan, Anzac, and America, and uh, colonial stuff, and all the neutrals like Saudi Arabia, Persia, Turkey. So this this game board is designed for World War II, but and that is understandable that this is made for World War II. But here's something I have not seen really anybody do, and if you have done this, well, I give props to you taking this game board to your advantage and not just doing world war ii like this game board is so huge and there's so many territories that you could virtually do anything that you want so like for example i've examined this board and i come to the conclusion that you can theoretically do the american civil war the uh napoleonic wars the obviously world war one and two you can also do the Chinese Civil War before and after World War II. You can, uh, let's see here, you can even do the war in the Middle East that's going on right now. It's like, I haven't really seen anybody take this to their advantage and just have fun with the game. It's like, you don't have to change any of the mechanics of the game. You just have to set it up right. And if you can do that, you can play whatever kind of war you want. And now this leads me to where I am starting this series, I World 1914 is a relatively new game for me. I purchased it not too long ago. 
and I really like it. However, the game board itself, I kind of don't like. And so I decided that after play testing this, getting used to the board and just the sheer size of it, I kind of noticed that the territories here are kind of aligned in a certain way that if you put the pieces in the right places, you can theoretically do a World War I scenario. So like right here we have France, we have uh, Portugal which is allied to France, which is why I have a French uh, marker there. And Germany you can see kind of has that, kind of has that like L shape that it has. And then uh, right here in Slovakia, Hungary, you obviously that's where the capital is because it's Hungary and really even though I know it's Austria-Hungary, Southern Germany would kind of be where Austria is, but I decided to do Hungary just because it's easier to remember. And just Yugoslavia, I know that this is a multiple ones, but just for the sake of the board, board game, I decided to give that to Austria. Russia, really, only difference is they own Finland. And then down here we have Turkey. Now this is where some people might speculate on using neutral territories, but this is the whole purpose of this series is experimenting with the board game and seeing what all kind of scenarios we can do. And this includes neutral countries. Now the thing with neutral countries is that these little things here, and if you're an experienced player, you know what these mean. Uh, these no longer apply and that these are owned by the respective people that own it. And I know that the Ottoman Empire also kind of went in down here, part of my shadow and down here. But for the sake of the board game or this board, I just gave all Saudi Arabia for that and they have Turkey has all that. So yeah, that is the purpose of these of this uh, game series is experimenting with the Axis and Allies 1940 second edition game board and there is something that most people really don't know or are aware of but don't really pay any attention to it world war one was mainly fought in europe everybody knows that with the eastern front western front the trench warfare everybody knows about that but what most people don't know is that the war was also in the pacific and by just doing a little bit of research, you can set up the Pacific in the 1914 era. So right here we have the Japanese, and now following the rules of the rest of the World War II, World War One, pardon me, era, there are no tanks, no aircraft really. So basically, I took the 1940 setup, and then I looked at the numbers in the. Uh, units and then i put those respective units like six infantry two artillery right up in japan but then i skipped over the ones that were not introduced yet in world war one so like the tank the triple a gun two fighters tactical bombers strategic bombers those weren't invented yet thus air bases really weren't naval base major industrial complexes really weren't a thing because how I'm going to play this game is the majority of it is going to be 1940 rules for a few exceptions that are World War I specific. The, the uh, combat is going to be simulating trench warfare by instead of rolling, like let's say Italy right here attacks southern Germany. You don't ro continuously roll to see who wins that territory. These troops will stay in southern Germany, so there will only be one round of dice rolling. That simulates uh, trench warfare. Then we also have their system of the combat. It's like if there's a certain unit that is alongside another unit. It's like, let's say, artillery is supported by tanks or infantry. Those die, those uh, com combat... Um, numbers like right here's a two. All right, perfect example right here. Attacking tanks is two, but tanks with artillery support is three. That's about the best I can do. And just for fun, I might do this, I might not. Research and development for planes and uh, tanks, planes for those countries that don't start off with them. 
obviously tanks. See who gets the first tank. It's turning the tide of the war. I'm going to back over here in the Pacific real quickly. Because Germany, the war did happen in the Pacific, but not much. Doing my research, Germany really owned uh, this area right here. What is this called? Shangtung. They, they had a colony there. And then they also had the Marianas, the Coraline Islands, and the Marshall Islands. And then with the map that I had, did I, deter I guesstimated the area, and they also had Peleliu, New Guinea, and New Britain were also in their territory. Solomon Islands at the time were British, as well as the Line Islands. So this just gives a whole new perspective on the game, really. And that just because of the sheer size of this map, is how many scenarios can you do? And that's what this series is going to be. So once I start World War I, that'll be a kind of first part. Then when World War I ends, I will immediately kind of pick up on the next scenario, which will most likely be World War II. Or the little wars like the Spanish Civil War and the Chinese Civil War. Just all those, all these different scenarios that I am capable of doing. And that's what I'm going to showcase in this series. So this video is kind of getting long. I kind of wanted this first video to be background. What, do, what is this series going to be? How am I going to do it? And what direction is it going to go? So now that I have this basically all explained, the next episode... Or the next uh, part will be the first round that'll most likely be uploaded tomorrow after I upload this video oh yeah one more thing with the Chinese and the Anzac these two were not involved in World War one but just for the hell of it I decided to set these two up just to kind of fill up the board so it's not too empty so anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this quick little informative video the next episode will be round one, starting with Austria-Hungary, then Russia, then Germany, then France, then Britain, then Ottoman Empire, then Italy will actually come in, not do the first round, but they will come in in the second round, just for historical accuracy. The United States doesn't come into the war until its fourth round, so right away we'll go from Ottoman Empire straight to Japan. So yeah, I hope you guys will enjoy this video series. This is one of my favorite board games of all time, really. And do leave a like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment on your thoughts about the this uh, idea of the idea of this series and with all your uh, all these scenarios. And also leave a comment if you have done this, where you've put aside the World War II area and just did something of your own, even made up your own scenario. Do. Subscribe for more future content. I do plan on uploading a lot of videos of these along with my World War II online and I might start like a Star Wars uh, Empire at War or Star Wars Battlefront 2. It's kind of these old war games that I personally love and that's the direction my channel is going. So see you guys in the next one.